Scholars, today we are going to be reading the rest of Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes. I can't wait to read this last book with you all. So make sure that you have your historical fiction journal ready. Let's go to chapter nine. Chapter nine, racing with the wind. As Sadako grew weaker, she thought more about death. Would she live on a heavenly mountain? Did it hurt to die? Or was it like falling asleep? If only I could forget about it, Sadako thought. But it was like trying to stop the rain from falling. As soon as she concentrated on something else, death crept back into her mind. Ela Masters, why is all that Sadako can think of just death? Tell me. Right, friends. I love how many of you were using the words thinks or feels to describe Sadako's perspective. She thinks and knows that she's getting weaker and feels sicker and is probably feeling scared about maybe the fact that she thinks she might die soon. Let's keep reading. Toward the middle of October, Sadako lost track of days and nights. Once, when she was awake, she saw her mother crying. Don't cry, she begged. Please don't cry. Sadako wanted to say more, but her mouth and tongue wouldn't move. A tear slid down her cheek. She had brought her mother so much grief. Friends, last couple chapters yesterday, we talked about how Sadako was compassionate because even when she was in all this pain and feeling weaker, she still only thought of her mother and her family. I can't imagine what it must be like being a little girl and feeling scared of dying and being worried about your mother like that. I know I need to take a moment to write that down in my historical fiction journal. And all Sadako could do now was make paper cranes and hope for a miracle. Wow, Sadako is so hopeful, even given the fact that she's not feeling well. She fumbled with a piece of paper, but her fingers were too clumsy to fold it. Friends, why do you think that Sadako can't fold any more cranes? Tell me. Right, she's getting weaker and more tired, and it's getting harder to have control of her hands enough to be able to fold her origami cranes. I can't even make a crane, she said to herself. I've turned into a real turtle. Quickly, quickly, Sadako tried with all her strength to fold the paper before she was swept into darkness. Wow, she is so strong and still is holding on to that hope. It might have been minutes or hours later that Dr. Numata came in and felt Sadako's forehead. He gently took the paper out of her hands. She barely heard him say, It's time to rest. You can make bir more birds tomorrow. Sadako gave a faint nod. Tomorrow, tomorrow seemed such a long, long way off. The next time she awoke, the family was there. Sadako smiled at them. She was part of that warm, loving circle where she would always be. Nothing could ever change that. Already, lights were dancing behind her eyes. Sadako slid a thin, trembling hand over to touch the golden cream. Life was slipping away from her, but the cream made Sadako feel stronger inside. Scholars, what seems to be helping Sadako feel better at the end? Right, she is thinking of that golden crane. 
and it gives her hope and strength. Gives hope and strength. What makes Sadako feel better at the end? She thinks that the golden crane gives her hope and strength. Make sure that you have all seven of these words. Thinks golden crane gives hope and strength. It reminds her of the support that her best friend Jizuko gave her and that her family gives her. I also see in the text how she says, no matter what, she would always be part of that warm, loving circle. If you need to, friends, pause your video to make sure that you have written that down now. Good. Let's keep reading. She looked at her flock hanging from the ceiling. As she watched, a light autumn breeze made the birds rustle and sway. They seemed to be alive and flying out through the open window. How beautiful and free they were. Sadako sighed and closed her eyes. She never woke up. Friends, what happened to Sadako? Tell me. Yes, Ely Masters. Sadly, Sadako Sasaki died. She died. If you need to, pause your video to type that in now. While you're doing that, I'm going to take a moment to reflect in my historical fiction journal. I can't imagine a girl as young as 11 dying from a disease that wasn't her fault. I wonder how I might think or feel. And I'm also thinking about, wow, even as a little girl, and even as she probably knew what was happening, she showed so much courage and hope and strength, even at the end. Friends, we've reached the end of the chapters in Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes. This text also includes something called an epilogue. Say it with me. Yes, authors sometimes write an epilogue to end a story and provide more information outside of that story. Let's read what the author has to say about Sadako Sasaki. Epilogue. Sadako Sasaki died on October 25th, 1955. Her classmates folded 356 cranes so that 1,000 in total were buried with Sadako. Friends, so remember we read in the previous chapter that Sadako had only managed to make 643 cranes, or 644. Now that her classmates folded 356 cranes, how many in total were buried with, Sa with Sadako? Tell me. Yes, friends. According to the author, 1,000 origami cranes were folded by Sadako and her classmates. If you need to, pause your video to type that in now. Good. In a way, she got her wish. She will live on in the hearts of people for a long time. What do you think the author means when she says that Sadako got her wish? Hmm. Tell me. Right. Even though, according to the author, Sadako didn't finish her cranes, did she still achieve her motivation in a way? Hmm. Let's keep reading. After the funeral, the bamboo class collected Sadako's letters and her journal and published them in a book. They called it Kokeshi, 
after the doll they had given to Sadako while she was in the hospital. The book was sent around Japan and soon everyone knew about Sadako and her thousand paper cranes. Sadako's friends began to dream of building a monument to her and all children who were killed by the atom bomb. Young people throughout the country helped collect money for the project. Finally, their dream came true. In 1958, the statue was unveiled in the Hiroshima Peace Park. There is Sadako, standing on top of a granite mountain of paradise. She is holding a golden crane in outstretched hands. Scholars, in 1958, what was unveiled at Hiroshima Peace Park in Japan? Three years after Sadako passed? Tell me. Yes, they built a statue of Sadako. Thanks to all of Sadako's friends in her bamboo class, as well as people all over the world who are inspired by her story. Let's add that to our Google form. A statue of Sadako was unveiled. And she was holding, of course, the golden crane. Let's keep reading. A folded crane club was organized in her honor. Members still place thousands of paper cranes beneath Sadako's statue on August 6th, Peace Day. They make a wish too, and their wish is engraved on the base of the statue. This is our cry. This is our prayer. Peace in the world. Scholars, we probably have a lot of feelings reading what happened to Sadako and what happened at the end of this story. So make sure that we take a moment to reflect in our journal. Scholars, as good readers, remember, we always need to also ask ourselves, what point of view was Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes told? Remember that we have a resource that we can use under classwork to help us. Remember that as a good reader, I need to ask myself, who is the narrator, the one telling the story? Is it first person point of view? The story was told by Sadako or her parents or someone in the story? Or third person point of view? It was told by an outside narrator. Can you tell me? What do you think? First person point of view or third person point of view? Tell me. Yes, friends. This was told from third person point of view. I know that because the author always used Sadako's name and characters' names and said she and her. The author, the narrator, never said I or we. So this was told from third person point of view. Third person, and I can write P-O-V to show point of view. If you need to, pause your video to type that in now. Good. So if this text, third person point of view, who is the narrator? Tell me. Yes, it is not a character in the story. Sadako is not telling the story and neither are any other characters. This story is told from an outside narrator. Go ahead and pause your video if you need to type that in now. Good friends. ELA Masters, as I reminded you before we started reading, in historical fiction, we always have to ask ourselves, what is fact, good, what is real, and what is, yes, what is fiction? 
Friends, Eleanor Cower, the author of Sonical and the Thousand Paper Cranes, was again writing a historical fiction text. Even though there were real facts, we know that it ultimately came from the author's imagination. One of Miss Yalbut's favorite things is to play a little game called trivia, where we try and guess the answer to a question. Scholars, let's think of some events in this story, and I want you to tell me if you think that it is fact or fiction. The author said that Sadako Sasaki really loved running. What do we think? Fact or fiction? Show me. <gasps> Scholars, if you said fact, give me a high five. Yes. Sadako Sasaki pictured here really did love running, and she ended up beating this boy at the relay race during that fall festival. Can you say so cool? Good, friends. Let's make sure that we write that in our planner or in our Google form. Sadako really did enjoy running in real life, and we know that from this awesome photograph. Good. Next, I wonder, the author said that Sadako never finished the 1,000 origami cranes. And we just read that her classmates helped fold 356 more in order to make 1,000. What do we think? Is this fact or fiction? Tell me. Ooh, your answers are really interesting. But friends, this is in fact fiction. In real life, Sadako actually finished, according to her brother Masahiro, over 1,300 origami cranes. Can you say, whoa? That is a lot of crane scholars. And by the way, 1,300 is our secret number. So make sure that you type that in here, as well as writing that this was fiction. And sometimes the author might include things that are make-believe in order to make a story really engaging. And I know that as a reader, I really liked hearing at least how her classmates helped her fold paper cranes. But now I know, at least according to Sadako's brother, that that was fiction. Sadako, in fact, finished many more origami cranes. Her extra 300, she used to wish for her parents to be okay with money, which again, is so compassionate and hopeful. Ely Masters, this is again a real photograph of Sadako's Kokeshi doll that her classmates gave her, as well as some of all of the little cranes that she had on her bedside table. And this is a picture of Sadako's statue at Hiroshima Peace Park. On the next page, if you'd like, you get to go on a virtual field trip to visit it. And finally, this is Sadako wearing, what did her mother give us? Give her, can you remind me? Yes, that beautiful kimono. Friends, make sure that you double check your answers and rewind the video if you didn't catch that secret number before moving on.